Hi, I'm Jessie, the tits behind Titty City Design. In this six part interview series, I'm gonna connect with real people that are part of the movement. The movement is a social movement. I started to break the stigma around boobs. At Titty City Design, we believe that by talking openly and honestly about our experiences with our breasts, we can take back the power from those who over-sexualize our bodies. Instead, when we talk freely about our experiences with our breasts, we can promote body positivity. We can help educate and share resources on breastfeeding and make postpartum and the transition to motherhood feel less lonely. And we can encourage each other to take better care of our breast health because one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. So get ready to hear from inspiring organizations, entrepreneurs, and healthcare professionals in our brand new interview series. Be part of the movement with us and help break the stigma around boobs. Welcome to Titty Talks. Join me as I talk titties with entrepreneur Erin Robertson from Viral Sensation to Shark Tank. We're going to chat about how she created the Tata Towel and her journey to promoting body positivity. Erin even shares the behind the scenes of working with one of the sharks and a story about Ashley Graham. As the owner and creator of Tata Towels, Erin has built a brand that celebrates body positivity and builds confidence with a towel to fit just about every bra size. Erin Robertson is on a mission to make getting ready no sweat with her patented Tata Towel that absorbs that dreaded under boob sweat. Get ready to be inspired and empowered by Erin's passion and dedication to creating the Made in LA Tata Towel. Um, well, hi, Erin. <laughs> I am. I'm so so excited to get to talk to you today. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to you know have this interview on the Let's Talk Titties blog. Of uh, course, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's just it's exciting to to feature you as an entrepreneur and share about. Um, what you do and your brand that you created, Tata Towels, because it's obviously so close to what my passion is and what my business is that like, it's only natural that we connected and I'm so impressed by you. I'm so impressed by what you've invented and your brand and your story is so cool. So, and nice. obviously we, we just share, we share the love for our Tatas and all the Tatas. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so um so yeah you have a really fun story to tell and today just to, for everyone that's listening we're gonna be talking about self-love we're gonna be talking about body positivity how Erin mm -hmm. created her product the Tata towel she went on Shark Tank so cool we can't wait to hear <laughs> about that story and um and what we can that always makes me sweat uh, <laughs> I yeah, it's like kind of honestly making me sweat a little bit, just bringing it up like, oh my gosh, just being being in the tank with the sharks. Dun, dun, um, dun. dun, dun, dun. I know. I'm sure you hear that, like that sound in it, like probably triggers something. Oh yeah. Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, hey, sweat and boob sweat is kind of really connected to what we're talking about today. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for everyone also that's listening, like Aaron and I, we got connected through Instagram, which the internet can be like, you know, such a fun place. And obviously we share a love for breasts, tatas, titties, boobs, all the fun words we can, we can come up with. Um, and it's just been, it's been so fun keeping in touch with you, Aaron, since we first connected. Same. And, um, yeah, I actually, I remember you telling me um, like on Instagram that you like had heard me on a podcast and honestly, I was just like, oh my God, it's only natural to have you on Titty Talks. And so we can talk about your story too. So. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we've met too, honestly, like the internet, it's so crazy sometimes the people that you can meet and it's fun. So here we are. <laughs> Exactly. Here we are. After sliding into each other's DMs. I know. I know. We were we were meant to be breasties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's dive in. Um, 
again, for those that may not know about you and your brand, Ta Ta Talls, um, I just would love for you to just kind of give us a little background about yourself and who you are, where you're from, just a little bit about your background. Okay, um, I am a proud Navy brat, so I am from all over the U.S. I've lived coast to coast, uh, and then I spent the last 22 years in Los Angeles, and then I recently, and I'm actually in the middle of moving to the Pacific Northwest right now, which is so fun, and then, oh yeah, and also I'm the inventor and creator of Tata Towels, which are towels for your tatas. <laughs> Yes, yes, they are. Um, by the way, I have been just like dying to try it out. I don't know why I haven't ordered one yet, but I did. Oh, and I think you should I have told it. me. I would have sent you one. All right. The next podcast we do, we're both going to be wearing them. And oh, by the way, of course, I'm wearing mine. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Done. Um, mine actually is supposed to, I think it's arriving today. So I'm like checking my phone. If it like dings, I'm like, <laughs> Oh shoot. You should have told me. I would totally would have sent you one. Oh, well, I, I want to support you. So I'm so, so happy to, to have oh, ordered and gone through the whole process. That's sweet. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. I, you know, being on the West Coast, um, you know, we definitely share that in common. So that is the breast awesome. coast. The breast coast, yes. Um, I am wearing a t-shirt right now that says my one of my signature sayings, the breast coast. Love it. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, so yeah, you know, we we obviously immediately bonded over this. The names of our companies, Titty City, Ta Ta Towels. Um, and we're the perfect pair. <laughs> <laughs> okay yes give me a yes. lot of puns here today I know have you always been a fan of puns boob puns oh yeah for sure I mean my parents are very sarcastic so growing okay. up I think I just naturally have you know a sarcastic vocabulary and attitude <laughs> yeah so, uh whenever I can find a pun I will play around with it so yeah I've always been I've been a punny girl my whole life <laughs> yes that's awesome that's awesome um, what about like, you know, uh, you know, for me, at least too, like body positivity and self-love, has that been kind of a part of your life as well? Can you share more about that? Yeah, I think body positivity has been something I've struggled with my whole life. And uh, up until the point of starting my business, it's kind of transitioned into now respect and I'm actually finding what body positivity is. And so it's been a long journey, but I think I've kind of hit, or I've gone through all of it, right? Like mm. we're so negative and looking at ourselves and to then all of a sudden I have this business and brand that it, I want to be body positive, but how do I do that if I'm not positive, mm. about, you know, my own body. And so I honestly have to think, my my business and the models who I've worked with, every single one of them has been my muse and every single one of them, I leave photo shoots just feeling so grateful to be surrounded by women who, you know, yes, they might be a couple sizes bigger than me, but they are stunning. And I mean that in a way of, you know, I'm so hard on myself thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not this right size. But then here is this model who's, a couple sizes bigger and I am just enamored by their authenticity and their beauty and their confidence and so it's been um a struggle my whole life to find my own you know be positive about my own body yeah. and then starting this business it's really been a blessing to work with and be surrounded by so many women who are so positive it's kind of you know changed my outlook and it's also why I'm so adamant about my pictures not being retouched and, you know, just it's important <laughs> to yeah. you know, spread that uh, yeah. awareness and to just, like I said, my models have been my muse this whole time. Wow. That's beautiful. Like I, I have like some, some similar like feelings as well, like about starting a brand about boobs and like what that really means. But like, I totally, I totally hear what you're saying about like, there's this, there's this element of like confidence too, right. That comes with like, when, when there is this like respect and this like self-love for your body, like all of a sudden mm -hmm. it like creates this, like almost like unstoppable and unshakable confidence. 
Yeah. And, you know, I would also find out, I would think to myself, you know, where does it start, right? Like we're supposed to, as moms, women, we're supposed to have our hectic morning and then get out the door fresh as a daisy, looking all beautiful <laughs> and confident, but you don't feel confident when you're sitting there sweating <laughs> and, you know, you get out of the shower and you try to make yourself pretty, but yet you're sitting there looking at yourself in the mirror, looking like a refrigerator with your giant towel on. So <laughs> that was part of my, you know, going back to all of our mornings are different and chaotic, yeah. but I want women to have that time of while they're getting ready, look at themselves in the mirror and have positive thoughts instead yeah. of being all covered up, feeling sweat dripping from all the places, all the nooks and crannies of our beautiful bodies that we're blessed with. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just want, um, yeah, I just wanted to give women some confidence in the morning. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, we've like kind of teased about it oh, a yeah. lot, but like, let's talk about ta ta towels. Okay. Tell us what it is. Tell us the inspiration or for my pun friend, the titspiration and just, you know, how it came to be. Yeah. So I am someone who has MacGyvered my way through life. Um, I was in school. I was never good at school, but I was really good at daydreaming. <laughs> I was really all my report cards or she can't sit in her seat, can't stop talking, stares out the window, um, oh. you know, so I've always uh, had a hard time with like the book smarts. And mm. so I kind of struggled and didn't know what I was going to do with my life. That's why I was so grateful to the entertainment business, because you can change jobs every couple months and, you know, everything's new, different. And um so you you started your career in the entertainment business? I did. I was a personal assistant for a lot of celebrities, musicians, actors, producers, directors. Oh wow. It I'm was, sure you've got lots of stories. Oh my gosh. <laughs> stories for days. That could be a whole nother podcast of <laughs> the craziness of working in that industry. Um it was fun though. I really yeah. uh, I I'm grateful for it, but it also, you know, it's, I was lost, mm. you know, just kind of trying to figure it out. And then all of a sudden I started um, working on these shows and I was trying to find women that I was, I could look up to of like, oh, I want her life. So let me work towards, you know, what she's doing or I'll find out from her and, you know, try and go that path. But all the women that I would be working with, it was just, they weren't happy. It was a thankless job. They were overworked. Um, and so I just kind of started having that feeling of, uh oh, what am I going to do with my life? You know, am I going to be a personal assistant forever um, and just take care of all these people? Like, when do I start taking care of myself? And um, it's kind of funny. I am a business owner by accident. I was one day just getting ready. Um, I was doing the true LA. You're going to love this. So I had an LA day with my girlfriends and we went to the sweatshop. Do you know where that is? On yes. Yes. I, I've the been sweatshop there. Because they are the reason for me starting this business. So first we went to Cafe Gratitude and ate grass, which nothing against them because I love Cafe Gratitude, but you know, it's not very filling. So <laughs> I'm just painting the picture of the day and how it all happened. So A true we, LA day. I love that. Exactly. So we went to Pilates and then we went to Cafe Gratitude and then we went to the Sweat Shack, which, or Sweat Shack or Sweat Shop. I'm not, I forget. I think it's like, I think, isn't it Sweat House? Maybe it's Sweat oh, House. Maybe it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweat House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I but actually just thing. saw it. It was a place, like, for anybody that doesn't know what this is, it's like. Oh, a, torture. It's a place where you are like covered in like an infrared blanket and you just like sweat, 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 oh, sweat, sweat. But wait, you're leaving out the best part. They give you sweatpants, yeah. sweatshirt socks and then they yeah. zip you in a sleeping bag and the worst yeah. part of all is they put a cup of water by your shoulder but with no straw <laughs> and your <laughs> arms are in the blanket like you are yeah. literally like you're sweating. like sweating like you're a burrito and they're sweating you're like everything out <laughs> yeah and 
I'm a girl who's down to try anything once and I'll, you know, I, so I was down, but I didn't ask any questions. So <laughs> nobody told me that you sweat while you're in there, but you're going to be sweating profusely hours after. Nobody yeah. Had told yeah. That. So I had a date scheduled for that day and we get out of the sweatshop and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm running late. I need to run home and get ready. So I ran home and my air conditioning was broken in my tiny little apartment in Los Angeles. Um, where was I living at that time? Uh, I keep wanting to say Lake Stevens, not Lake Stevens, uh, 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 Los Feliz. Yeah, in Los Feliz. Okay, yeah. So um, I was trying to get ready and I just, I could not stop sweating. And, you know, I always sweat while getting ready. It's hot, especially while you blow dry your hair. But this was, this was a lot more than usual. And I was like, you know, fanning myself off with the blow dryer. I had a towel on my head. I had that Velcro one wrapped around me, but I just kept feeling beads of sweat pouring down my stomach. And then I was just, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, there's a towel for everything, but not where, like, why isn't anything getting this area, you know, like, yeah, like right sense. under your boobs, like the skin is touching your skin, you are sweating. <laughs> right. So I ended up taking my towel and putting it under my boobs. And now here I am trying to feel cute, getting ready. And I've just got my udders hanging over, you know, I just, I did not feel cute whatsoever. And I just kept thinking to myself, there has to be something. So honestly, as I'm blow drying, I'm looking at my phone, trying to, you know, I'm on Amazon, like boob sweat, boob towel, boob something. And I just couldn't find anything. So I ended up going to this date. It was awful. I showed oh. up and it was the traditional, doesn't look like his pictures. He's just weird. And I just wasn't feeling it. So yeah. Uh, I went home. I politely excused myself. <laughs> and now, honestly, you have to thank this person because you're like getting ready to see them. Like, yeah, changed so much. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't even, I don't even remember the name, but, <laughs> Perfect. but you know, thank you to that guy um, and sweatshop. And so I ended up coming home and I just, you know, I just had that thought of, what could I do? How could I create something? And I wasn't thinking big picture. I was just trying to solve my own problem. And then, um, and prior to that, I remember sitting around and my girlfriends and I would talk about, you know, boob sweat, but no one ever really went into detail, but we were finding out, you know, people were having, girls were having rashes. It was just really uncomfortable, myself included. Um, and so I just thought there has to be something, but there wasn't. So I laid in bed and I thought of all the different scenarios or, you know, different ways I could make something. And I just kind of had that aha moment. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think, I think I know how to do this. And so I ran to my living room and I taped four pieces of printer paper together and I cut out what I thought would be a pattern. And then I borrowed my best friend's sewing machine. I YouTubed how to sew and then... <laughs> Oh yeah, I had no idea how to sew. No, none whatsoever. You're and then, like starting a whole line of like, you know, apparel, if you will, or like top, like linens. And you're like, I don't even know how to sew. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea how to sew. But again, it was that MacGyver in me. When I was yeah. younger too, I should say this, I grew up in a home where like, you can't watch TV. It was more like get outside and play. So I would always sneak over to my friend's house because her parents would always watch MacGyver. And I loved that show. And so I would sit there and watch the show. And if you don't know what it is, this guy could make anything out of nothing. And so I feel like it really stuck with me uh, to this moment because I was thinking, okay, how can I make this out of stuff that I have, right? Because I can't, you know, I can't make material or anything like that. So I, um, I borrowed a friend's sewing machine. I YouTubed how to sew. I asked my mom for fabric because I had no idea where to get fabric. I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> so I ended up cutting up towels in my house or my apartment. I always say this, shout out to my roommate, Sean. I'm so sorry I cut up all of her towels um, <laughs> at the time. I was like, I was on it, right? I was like, I yeah. think I've got it. 
So uh, I made these towels that, uh, shoot, I'll send you a picture of the first couple ones I made because they're hilarious. They oh just look like a two-year-old made them. And so uh, I came up with a couple prototypes and then I started handing them out to my friends who were complaining about, you know, certain issues. Um, I also had a lot of friends who were about to be first time moms. And so they were, you know, talking about the night sweats of breastfeeding and things like that. Wow. So I just kind of, that strategic- is real. That's a real problem. It, yes. I have seen it. Well, not firsthand, but I've seen it through my friends struggling with yeah. it. And so I just wanted to be the problem solver. And I also thought, okay, they're the first, they're, they're the, the perfect test group, right? Mm -hmm. So I started handing them out to them and then they wouldn't give them back to me. (laughs) And so (laughs) I was like, "Uh, can I have them back? And they're like, no. And I'm like, no, really, I need them because I can't keep sewing. Like I've got needles going through my finger. Like I I, I need to have these. I don't know how many more (laughs) I can make before I like start losing fingers. And so uh, they were like, no, they're, these are great. And um, that's kind of just, how it all started. Wow. That is so cool. I love, I love that. You like, you MacGyvered this idea. You like, yeah. you like took it and you were like, okay, there's actually like a real, there's, you know, there's a real spot for this in the market. Yeah. Like there's like a real problem that you're solving. Well, and um, not to mention, I also had rashes under my breast and they were extremely painful. And I had gone to the dermatologist. I had, you know, tried everything and I just didn't feel like ointments were healthy to be putting yeah. there. And, yeah. you know, especially they say deodorants and all these different things. And I thought to myself, that can't be healthy and that can't, uh, and it also hurt. It was really painful to put anything on, um, that area. Cause it was so sore. It's and raw. Yeah. So, uh, when I started using the towel, uh, every morning religiously, even if I didn't shower, I would put it on while getting ready because, you know, moisture happens, build up, especially that skin on skin contact. And then I started noticing that, not only are my rashes healing, but they're going away and they haven't come back. And uh, honestly, to this day, I have not had a problem with that area rashing at all. So I knew I was something when uh, I started fixing that area, an area that I struggled with. Yeah. And then like, obviously you have to think to yourself, like, if I'm struggling with this, like, so many other people must be and so that's that's the part that I think is just so so brilliant too and you know what's funny about that is yes a lot of women struggle with it but at the time when I was creating it no one wanted to talk about it talks about it no one if you say boob sweat or you have a rash you're instantly met with oh what no, that's gross. And it's like, yeah. really? Let me see your bra. Let me smell your bra. Not to be gross, but like, let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, um, stop lying. You have this problem too, probably. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's honestly, it's remarkable to me, like how we, we like, we feel so much shame around like our breasts, particularly yeah. that like, we won't share about those experiences because yeah you know, like uh, our bodies just have been viewed for, you know, tell as old as time as sexual objects. And so talking about them, there's some sort of like shame or like, you're, are you talking about something sexual? Like it, it's so taboo, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. and so, yeah, it's wild. But then like, you know, even to something you were talking about earlier before, when we were talking a bit about body confidence is that like when once you like have a product like this that you create um and similarly for me about products covered in boobs like yeah. it immediately like helps people to talk about their experiences right to like help because like yeah that could be a serious issue to have like a rash that you're like not paying attention to an actual health issue yeah because you're uncomfortable talking about your breasts like a body part yeah. that's like it's a body part like you yep. know you know? Yeah. Um, A lot of women, uh, you know, still to this day, it's funny how many men buy this towel for their wife 
And then we get emails from the men and the women that they gifted it to saying, my husband bought me this because he heard me complaining about boob sweat and I would have never purchased this, but I am so thankful that he did because this is so great. So it still is a real thing, you know, like yeah. women still don't want to talk about it. And, you know, it's okay. I think that I've definitely seen from the beginning of when I started this business to now it's been widely like more accepted and yeah. women talk about it because I think that at least for myself when I find somebody else who struggles with something that I'm insecure about and you have that I, it's just magical when two women can get to, or more can get yeah. together and talk about these issues you don't feel so alone and you don't feel so yes. gross or you know whatever else you know however else it might make you feel yeah. it, it really you leave the room thinking oh, wow, a little bit of that like negativity went away. And also you're so grateful for her being so brave also <laughs> to yes. talk about these things because, you know, it really is met with, ew, gross, boob sweat. And yeah, yeah so. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been an I, interesting ride. <laughs> I hear that. I, you know, I can completely relate. And um, yeah, there's just something that's just so, so brave, right? About talking about it, like bringing it up and that, that also just helps other people bring it up like that. Yeah. Just there, just saying it like, you know, just mentioning boob sweat, like, you know, maybe somebody else just like their ear perks up and they're like, wait, you know, a product for like, you know, like, huh. Yeah. It just, it's, it's so amazing how it, your product just promotes this, you know, self-acceptance on that level, right? Like just accepting like, Hey, yeah. Okay. So my, your body has that so does mine. This is not uncommon. And yeah. that right there just is promoting body positivity and, you know, ultimately self-love, like getting a little bit more, like finding out more about yourself and then taking care of yourself. And that's all part of, of self-love and yeah. something else. So I want to, you know, just praise you for is the, the size ranges are impressive for your towels. Like, Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I mean, like, it feels like really there literally aren't that many options out there for busty gals or just yeah. bigger bodies and anybody, just like all bodies, things just are not made for like, there's always this like one size fits all stuff. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes when I go to like a hotel and I'm like trying to wrap myself around the towel that they have in the oh. hotel, I'm like, what is this? This is just a napkin. It's and not only that, then you have to walk out with the, the top part barely touching and then everything else is wide yeah. open. You're like, and so you're much like, for a towel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like, yeah. this isn't, this isn't a real towel. Um, so <laughs> it's a napkin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Who does this exactly. cover? It doesn't even cover a butt cheek. Get out of no, here. No, <laughs> no, no, thank you. The, that like, not a confidence boost at a hotel when you get a towel that's like, um, is this for my hands or my body? What right? the heck? And that's what I mean by this is that I didn't even realize the confidence that I would be giving myself in these towels because I didn't realize how negative I was towards myself while getting ready. But I truly felt like a refrigerator getting ready in a big giant because in order to get a towel that would wrap all around my body, I had to buy the big bath towels. Then, you know, towels, they aren't as absorbent. They just yeah. kind of seem to push the wetness around. <laughs> and so I uh, it just, it was hard to get ready with confidence. And then once I put this towel on, I wasn't sweaty because my whole body could breathe. And yeah. then I had this towel that was not just, you know, wiping away the moisture, but my fabric wicks away and it actually pulls moisture away from your body so you're not just the sweat isn't just sitting on the towel against your yeah. skin and so it kind of just was a snowball effect of wow I feel better in the morning I feel a little more confident also I'm not gonna lie it makes your boobs look really good so you kind of have that confidence of like hmm, I found myself like dancing and singing a little bit more as I was getting ready and then I well, it's so cute like you have so many cute patterns and styles like not to mention it, it gives your boobs an actual like lift right like it gives a little lift it gives a little bit of a lift I don't like to say some women think that when I say my towels lift they're yeah. like oh but on my neck and it's it's a little difficult to explain it yeah. gives you a lift but it also 
separates the skin. From yeah. Which contact. is the important part. Like that's the, like yeah. the health part. That's what's, you know, making the area dry out. Right. So that our right. skin's not touching each other, creating rashes, all sorts of things like that. But, but it also but, lets you have your natural hang. Yeah. <laughs> right. So instead of being, while you're getting ready, being shoved in a bra and you can't breathe and you're already, you know, adjusting and trying to get comfortable, it lets you have that nat natural hang with a little lift. Yeah. Oh, it's your best amazing. friend. We'll pick you up in the morning. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Perfectly paired with your hot tits mug for a little perky morning. <laughs> and there's our commercial folks. Exactly. As we take little sips from our from our, you our by titty city <laughs> so cute um so yeah your products truly just like they solve like a real problem um curious so like how did you bring the tata towels to market like you'd been bringing it to your friends but like how did you like how did you go from there um so it's another a uh, lots of my stories will start and you know have I've started crying <laughs> start, I was yeah. having a breakdown and then um I started looking online for like farmers markets or little places where I could test the product um because the towels were really working I was getting great feedback and at this point I had made 26 towels all on my own oh my gosh and it was I thought I was like oh yeah I got this you know I've got 26 towels let's go to market let's try this out and the next uh expo or market that I could find was the LA Women's Expo um and so I signed up for that I got myself a booth and then I, that was it, right? I was like, okay, I'm signed up. This is going to be the big, the big reveal. I'm so excited. And then the day happened where I was maybe like a day or two away from like, you know, selling my product. And I started panicking. I was like, I was listening to all the negative voices in my head telling me that this is so silly and stupid and no one's going to understand it. And I was so broke at this point. I was working three jobs. I was driving for Lyft. I was uh, a personal assistant still. I was just trying to figure out a way to have this hobby, right? Because I really believed in it. And so I was like, you know, if I could sell a couple towels a week or whatever. That's great. It'll be my side gig. So um, I started panicking, thinking about going to this expo and I looked up the cancellation policy because I was going to cancel. No. I would, oh yeah. I was like, this is so stupid. No one's, everyone's going to laugh at me. What am I doing? Like, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. And so I looked up the cancellation policy and I was too broke to cancel because if you canceled last minute, you had to pay a fine. So I was uh, like, all right, well, put your big girl panties on. I guess, I guess we're doing it. And so um, I ended up going to the expo and I sold all 26 or 28 towels, however many I had. And I remember looking at my mom and I was like, if I could sell 10 a week, then I would only need two part-time jobs instead of three and then yeah. I could, you know I was kind the of math like, oh, is okay. real yeah, yeah exactly um and so I was really glad that I did that expo because I really wanted to back out I was like what what am I doing and I've had a lot of moments in my life where it's sink or swim time you know it's like you got to jump or sit still and you know let everything kind of pass you by and so I thought to myself well whatever. I won't tell anyone I'm at this expo. <laughs> so, you know, if it happens and people see me great, if not, no big deal. Um, and I went and at first it, I got a lot of faces of what is this? But then the women walked around the expo for a while and a light bulb went off. Why? Cause their boobs are sweating <laughs> and they're yep. hot. And so they would come back to the table and buy the towels. And, uh, that's, kind of how it all happened. And then women would grab their friends and, oh my gosh, look at this product. And then we were laughing together, right? And people yeah. were laughing at me and we were laughing together. And I had a great crowd around my table and it was just, I was starting to see the positive 
uh, outcome of these towels and the, you know, the women that were bringing their friends together. And it kind of was bringing people together, right? Because then yeah. they're like, oh, you have boots, sweat too. me too, girl. Oh my gosh, this is such a crazy area and blah, blah, blah. And so um, that's how it started. And then there was a woman there from Baby Center and I didn't know, and she had purchased a towel. And then two months later, I think, uh, she ended up writing the, an article and she was the first person to write about my towels. And wow. uh, yeah, and then it went viral from there. Wow. So viral how? Like on Instagram, TikTok? Like, oh, everywhere. Um, J- you know, James Corden? Mm-hmm. The late night show, he did a monologue about it. Kathy Lee and Hoda were talking about it. They were on the Ellen show. Oh I, my gosh. I had no idea. And by the way, I had only a couple towels made because I never thought in a million years that people would even know about my towels. So I didn't even know there was a button on the website for like overselling. I just thought, oh, oh shoot. But, you know, my towel's up and, you know, so I was out for the day and my phone, you know, when you get a sale, it drops down like, ding, yeah. ding. and so I was out and all of a sudden my phone just kept going, ding, 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 ding. it was buzzing like crazy. And I even turned my phone off. Cause I was like, something's weird. There's a glitch. So all of a sudden I, uh, go back to where I was living, which I called it Femro because I had this cute little bungalow and it was all these awesome women and artists that just lived there. I think there was like six of us. And I, I come back and they run outside and they're like, Aaron, have you seen it? Have you been online today? And I was like, no, why? And they're like, your towels are everywhere. And I was like, what do you mean they're everywhere? And they're like, they're everywhere and they were showing me articles and so I run inside and I look and it was everywhere I mean so I back up a little bit so then I go and look at my website and I had sold over 30,000 towels in a matter of a couple hours oh my god panic set in you would think I would be happy right I had no towels made at that point. I had a couple, you know, still attached to my sewing machine that I hadn't finished. And so I, like, but I, I'm not making 30,000 of these, my God. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. I was like, what do I do? Like, I don't even know how to fix the problem. But then I started panicking because you know how the internet can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. I was thinking, as fast as it came, everyone's going to tear me down because I don't have towels to give them. Like, I don't know what to do. And so I called my parents and I called my sister who they live in the, in Washington and they flew down and we started climbing all the racks and shelves downtown LA for fabric that matched the towels that I sold Uh to try and like piece it together. And then, um, I then had to find a manufacturer, which was really hard to do at that time because, you know, when you go in with all these orders, they look at you as, oh, who's this girl that knows nothing about this industry? And, you know, all the bad things that could have happened happened. So I had jumped to multiple manufacturers and it took me a couple months, but then I finally got all the towels out and everyone was really kind and nice. um, Uh. And and yeah. the customers too being kind and nice. The customers were great. They loved the towel because fortunately they loved the towels, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it was working. And once we would send some towels out, customers would talk about them. So I think people were just excited and understood. Um, hey, this happened by accident. So I always yeah, thought, people, you like, I'm know. a business owner by accident. I really thought that I would be handing these out and asking my friends to buy these for, you know, birthdays, holidays to like gift to their mom, their aunt, their grandma. Um, and then all of a sudden it just, took it off. literally happened. Not even overnight, just like over coffee. Like it just, over co- <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Like all of yeah. a sudden you <laughs> check your phone. You're like, what do I do? Yeah. Oh. And so, and then again, going back to the MacGyver thing, it was, I have to figure this out. Because I, the, 
sink or swim time, right? I either totally. have to shut the website off and tell everyone, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what I was doing and now yeah. I can't fulfill their orders or figure it out. And yeah. I did just, you ever like, did you ever contact that person who wrote the article about you? Oh yeah. And I do a thanks to, for her. Uh, I didn't oh. do it this year because I've been moving uh, yeah. back and forth, but August 3rd is when I went viral. So I always thank her and um, this lovely woman, Christine, who also uh, now she is phenomenal. She, uh, do you remember a while ago, this playboy model took a picture of a woman changing in the locker room and totally body shamed her. Uh, I think I do remember it, something. It like kind of went everywhere. And then yeah. this woman wrote an open article or I forget what it's called an open letter to her yeah. responding, kind of just saying, you know, how dare you? Like we all have these you know, imperfections on our body. And, you know, so she was on the Today Show um, and I had sent her a towel and I hadn't heard back from her, but I was thinking, you know, whatever, send a towel, she'll use it whenever. And then she did a post saying that she wasn't going to try the towel because she thought it was silly, but then her and her husband were doing yoga and she was sweating in that area. And as they walked into the room, she saw my towel sitting there and she's like, well, I guess now is the perfect time to put it to the test and see if it really works. And so she tried the towel on as well. And um, she did this write up on it, which received huge attention. So actually, those two women are both um, the reason why it went viral. Wow, I love I, oh, I got so many chills, just like, just like, so much women empowerment there. And like, yeah. women supporting women. That's just, you know, that's, that's what it should be like, right? Like and it sounds so cliche, but it's one of my favorite sayings is there's room for all of us at the table. So pull out the yeah. chair next to you for someone else to sit down because there is room for all of us. And the magic happens when you help somebody else also, you know, and it, yeah. you don't have to, you know, bend over backwards to help someone. You could just be a shoulder for them to cry on <laughs> or, oh, you know, yeah. someone to just support you and yeah, yeah I definitely support, support other support. women supporting me yeah so but it's so important it like uh I love that I love so much that you are still really connected with them and like how they helped you grow and like you showing your appreciation that's that's so cool yeah no they I uh, actually now because we posted it, I'm going to repost it now because I posted it on August 3rd and it's all kind of the breakdown and I post their article and what they said and it, yeah, huge. I will for all, I will always be grateful for them and I will always give them the shout outs because, you know, they deserve it and yeah. it takes a lot to um, help somebody else or not even help, but it, to believe in somebody else. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they definitely again, one of the women, she didn't think she was going to ever try. She was like, eh, we'll see. But she did. And she took a chance and it worked and she changed my life. And I'm just super grateful for her. Oh, that is so, uh, that's amazing. That feels like a hug. <laughs> yeah. Aw. Yeah. Giving your big hugs. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So Shark Tank. So how, like, how do we get from here to Shark Tank? You, yeah, just the story. Tell us the story behind how you, you know, how you ended up on there, what the process was like, how you yeah. prepared, you pitched, you sweat. Uh, <laughs> Luckily yes. you had your ta-ta towels ready to go. <laughs> yes. At this point too, I was like wrapping my head in them. I was wrapping my whole body in these towels. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board, ta-tas. <laughs> Yeah. So how did Shark Tank happen? I'm trying to like think back to how it all got started. So I was maybe six or seven months in after that viral moment. And I had sent a tape in to, uh, you know, because you either you have to send a tape or, you know, 
to somehow get through those doors. So I sent my audition tape and I got a call and I panicked because I used to watch that show all the time. And I used to always think like, good for those business owners, but I would never do that. That is so scary. <laughs> like I'm more of a, you know, know your strengths and your weaknesses, right? Like I'm creative. I can, you know, talk the creative side, talking numbers. I have no idea. I have extreme, I'm dyslexic. I have ADHD. Like I, there is no way I would be able to pull it off. But again, it was life presented me with a sink or swim moment. And I just thought to myself, when am I ever going to get this opportunity again? Shark Tank is a big deal. That is a yeah. hard club to get into. And the fact that I even got a phone call of interest back from my video submission, like, let's just jump through the hoops. I honestly thought I would never end up on. I just thought they were just being nice and like, oh, okay, we'll see. Um, but I ended up jumping through all the hoops and I was able to get on and it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> like how long was that process? You like, you submit your video, like they're coming back and forth with you. Was this like yeah. a couple of months? Was it a couple of weeks? Oh no, it definitely was a few months for okay. sure. Yeah. You yeah. get, you get vetted and you got to like go through all the, all the hoops. Um, and then I ended up getting on and I just, I still, you know, I was always that girl who felt left out, whether I was being left out or not, you know, being a Navy brat every 14 to 16 weeks, you move to another place. So of course yeah. people don't think to put you on an invite list or the new girl or, you know, so I just, whether it was happening or not, I always felt kind of left out. And then being able to get myself on this show and get myself to walk through the doors while my knees are like shaking like crazy. I just thought, you know, uh, you got to do it. And, you know, I just, it's back to sink or swim time. Sorry, I just started thinking about that moment and I got lost in like what I was saying. There no, is that happened for you. Yeah, I mean, that happened. Well, it happens. Like, honestly, it's like such an emotional experience, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. You're like, you know, there's this very big moment. You're on like a TV set, right? Like, you're like, it's seen the show before. You know, it's a big deal. You like actually made it through all those things prior to it. You're yeah. now here. You're on natural national television. Like, yeah, yeah you're nervous. Like, I, no wonder why your train of thought goes. over. you're like, I, I don't know. For me, I think I probably would just like stand there and just like. Uh, oh, well, I did have, um, I did have an out plan. Would you like to know what my escape plan was? Yes. So, working in TV. Um, I always, you know, I knew the background. I was always behind camera, never in front yeah. of camera. Um, but working on TV shows, I knew I was like, okay, if things go bad, they can't air if you swear a lot or if you hold up your middle finger. So uh -huh. if everything goes bad, I'm just going to hold a middle finger up and just swear a bunch and then run out those doors and they'll never air it. Like, no problem. <laughs> You're That's like, what I would tell crap. myself. Oh my gosh. You know what though? It's, you know, and I, I've seen your episode a few times and I just like to know that that was all going, I mean, you, just, I have to imagine all that going on in the background, like the nerves and all the stuff, but like, oh, yeah. you don't come across that way at all. You know, like that self-talk oh. we give ourselves sometimes is like, is so wild. And then yeah. you're like out there and you are, you know, you're talking to like these very wealthy investors yeah. about boobs. You're yeah. like, holy cow. Like I'm talking about tatas on national TV. Yep. Yeah. It and was. boobs are like still seen as taboo. So like. Yeah. Well, I definitely thought too, I wanted a panel of women, but I thought if I had the guys like it's boobs, so maybe they'll, yeah. you know, have some fun with it and it would be fine and good to go. Um, so yeah. And then also too, you know, if you watch the show, you know, people go on there and they know their numbers and they know what they're talking about. I had only been in business for six to eight months 
I had no clue about my numbers. I just had made it this far and I was kind of like, all right, let's go to the next thing. This is an opportunity. Yeah. Let's see what comes of it. And so, you know, I guess that's what I meant by I felt so left out growing up, but now I'm patting myself on the back because I just got myself into a club that is really hard to get into. And so yeah. kind of Congrats. A proud moment. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So proud moment, huge moment, like very small club. Like, you know, it, that's, that's incredible. Like, <laughs> and like, in your pitch, like your products on display, you've got all the tatas out. Like, yeah. How and my first like, models are with me. <laughs> how, like, what was, what were you thinking when you heard them like react? Was like anything surprising to you? Um, I think I blacked out most of it because, you know, you're just so scared, right? You want to be perfect. You got to say everything right. But you know, you're putting yourself in a situation where they're going to try and trip you up. And so I just kind of, you know, said my prayers before I went in. And then I literally, when the doors open, I had just gone to the Beyonce concert and that woman can walk, you know, like she would come out. And so I literally said, when those doors open, I was like, Walk like Beyonce. <laughs> now, oh, sorry, Beyonce, yes. because I did not do you justice at all. But that's what was in my mind of like, okay, be a confident woman, walk through that door, and here you go. And it was definitely the sink or swim moment when those doors opened. And it just, I kind of just went with it, right? Like, if I was going to be too scared, I would have messed up. And obviously, I did, but we're human, <laughs> right? And you have to, I guess I'm learning now that you know, business is not perfect. And all of those yeah. sharks have had major failures, but they've come back and learned from that. And I really respected that. And I thought, you know, these people know what to do. They've made it to the top. They've had to dig themselves back up from the bottom. So I just thought, here we go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. honestly, I was so scared of uh, Mr. Wonderful because obvious for obvious reasons, um, but he was lovely. And I still have it framed in my office today of him wearing the towel with the grapefruits in them. And it just, that, that was my highlight for sure. Yes. Oh my God. Love, love, love. And, um, and so Lori, she ends up investing in you and Tata Towels. Yes. Um, so, well, one, again, congrats, like so oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so like, how did that make you feel? Like, tell us about like the deal and, you know, you obviously, like you were saying that you're not like the business side of it, like coming up with the number that you wanted to do. Did you feel like you got what you were looking for? Like, and, and what happens after that deal? Yeah. So I... You know, I don't think I cared about the money going into it. I was just excited that somebody believed in me and my product, you know, because for the longest time I had gone through this process of self-doubt and say, you know, doubting myself every step of the way and thinking, you know, people aren't going to see it or understand this product. It's just, you know, for me and my friends, but for them to, when Lori said, um, what is she had me at or she or she said you had me at hello yeah. I first of all I love Jerry Maguire so I was like oh that's oh. um but then I just I think that's the big takeaway that um I got from it was oh my gosh this woman gets it and she even said she doesn't have large breasts so she doesn't have this issue however her mother did and she grew yeah. up in a house watching her mom tuck her t-shirt under or, you know, struggle with that, those issues. And so it just was a moment of major gratitude and excitement that she gets it. And, and by the way, all the judges said no, or all the sharks said no, and she yeah. was the last one. And so I really was getting my middle fingers ready and ready. To <laughs> my eggs out the door. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, this is over. No one, you know, here we go. Um, but when she said she got it, I just, it, 
not only made my day, I still think back to that time of when I just was so low, you know, like you have to put your face on and yeah, yeah. Great. but behind the scenes, I was still trying to get those orders fulfilled. I was still trying to figure it all out. And so I always say like, I became a business owner by accident, but, um, I, I just kept going. And again, I love bumper sticker quotes and they're so cliche, but you have to keep going when most people would stop. And that's what yeah. will separate you from the rest. And so I pushed through and got through those doors and uh, just was super grateful that Lori also saw um, how great these towels were and how needed they were. Yeah. And there's like, no market for it. No kidding. Like, and here you are, like, again, I can't say enough. Like you're here on like Shark Tank, national television promoting like a body positive product, like something that's like showing real like inclusivity in the marketplace. And like, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I was saying to you before, I don't remember if it was when we were recording or not, but like I had, you know, I watch, I watched Shark Tank. I didn't see your episode live when I saw it. Um, Cause I always just watch them recorded and you know it's like yeah. there's it's so fun and you're like oh my god this is brilliant and like sometimes I don't even realize I have Shark Tank products in my house I'm like no way yeah <laughs> like, you know because so. they're just so brilliant and they do a great job of picking out like the products that they know are going to be you know a hit and I just I love that Lori recognized that and there's not many products out there on, in the Shark Tank catalog that you know promote such body positive and inclusivity as like yours. So that's just like, I don't know. It's really cool. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so like after the deal, like now you, like now you're just like connected with Lori's team and she helped. How did she help? Yeah. So, um, you know, <laughs> you literally sign your life away. So there's, <laughs> certain things you can talk about and cannot talk about. Um, sure. And, and I'm not trying to get you to say anything you're not yeah. supposed to talk about, by the way. Just no, like no, no, no. <laughs> it's totally fine. But they like, you know, you just can't talk about things. Um, so everything with Lori is great. Her team is fantastic. Um, she's very kind and sweet. Also, her husband is a lovely human being. Um, and it really does feel like you're working with a family business, uh, even though she's so huge and has all these products and stuff, they really do treat you well. Um, they take you seriously. You can ask all the hard questions and, you know, it's kind of nice because you think that you're going to get a deal and then, okay they're going to take it away and do everything, but they really let you kind of learn the process um, also. And then um, we parted ways um, because it just was really important for me to make my towels here in the U.S. And I didn't want to, my business blew up before I could even learn the basics. And yeah. I just didn't want my business to grow so fast that I had zero control over it because to me it's bigger than boob sweat this isn't something that I wanted to just see on the CVS aisle of as seen on TV I really wanted to build a community of women who are supportive who support others uh who are okay you know talking about these things and it's just absolutely to me it's bigger than boob sweat um, and I just, I really wanted to make sure that manufacturing stayed in the U S and so, um, that's what we're doing now. Lori and I are still on great terms. Uh, so thankful to her and her team. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of to yeah. take care of it. You know, when going on the show, I was so scared and exhausted from trying to figure it out. I was like, take the business, do what you can with it. I'm over it. But then once we yeah. started going, it's like, oh, wait a second. I can do this. Like, you know, I want to, I want to make this bigger than boob sweat. So that's what I'm here doing. Oh, chills, chills, chills. I love that. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing exposure, amazing opportunity. I love that you yeah. got to learn so much. Like again, you, you know, over coffee, you just, learn like you you learned that you were a viral sensation and you're like now what 
<laughs> right now what <laughs> yeah now what well that first of all again thank you so much for sharing this is like a lot this is a lot to share a lot to go through emotionally too to like talk about yeah. your story and all the stuff the things that went great the things that were struggles being like you know trying to make all those towels getting a deal having to part ways like that's it's a lot it it and honestly like it's business like right like there's just there's so much that goes on with products but i i really do love and appreciate that you keeping your products made here in the us like that's just that's so meaningful. Yeah. They're made in Los Angeles. I yeah, even, yeah. Um, I actually even make my fabric in Los Angeles. Uh, nice. So I have, because again, it's about, here's one of them. Yeah. Uh, the Modal towel. It's love. super thin, yummy. It's a patented fiber. Um, it's lensing Modal, which is hot, super high quality, lightweight. And again, it was important to me to make a fabric that, wicked away moisture because I was finding that all the towels, bath towels, just was moving things around and still left, you know, some wetness in areas. So yeah, I make my fabric in Los Angeles. We manufacture it in Los Angeles and that won't change. I I love being able to like go to the factory and yeah. see all the people making the towels and making the fabric. It's just, it's really fun. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. That's so cool. It's like your products evolving. It's evolving. It's improving. Um, oh yeah. Like thinking back to like, just your cutout. <laughs> that you had. Oh my You're gosh. Like <laughs> they were so thick because I was literally making them with regular bath towels. I would yeah. go to like home goods and all those places buy the discounted towels that I could find. And then I we'll have to do talk again or I'll send you pictures. I call it yes. trip down mammary lane because the progression <laughs> of my towels and how they started to what they are now um, yeah. is definitely, they're definitely different now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. That's I, I, I mean, I can only imagine. Yeah. Like when you like, I know nothing about towels to now I'm sure, you know, like everything it is about like the patented material, you know, like all oh, yeah. the details that went into everything. Like, yeah, it's like a very pinch me moment. Well, and it was important too, because that area is so sensitive. I wanted to make sure the right fibers were touching that area. I didn't want yeah. to, you know, have any other issues caused by my fabric. So our modal is hypoallergenic. Yeah. Um, it's vegan. Quick drying. It's always fun to say for LA people, the towels are vegan. Yeah. <laughs> Love. Yes. And yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really proud of them. Oh, good. Yeah. I I'm proud of them. I'm proud of you. This is so inspiring. Like this is your story is amazing. And since like, how many have you sold? Like how many ta ta towels are out there? I get asked this a lot and I always am nervous to answer this question because I don't want to, you know, I've sold a lot of towels. Yeah. I like the way that's that I like, you don't have to, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. The way that I like to say it is I could fill stadiums with women just wearing, who have purchased these towels. And by the way, that's a photo op. That is a dream of mine is to like fill a stadium with all my customers and take a picture of all oh of God. us wearing our Tata towels. So yes. I'm, I'm seeing Super Bowl commercial. I don't know. I'm getting Thanks Super Bowl so vibes. Like, exactly. We want to start making towels too with um like like, we like license like the whole logo thing of the teams, but like the colors. So oh, yeah, you can wear your towel while you know preparing all the snacks and everything. Oh for my home. gosh! Like honestly, that would be so brilliant. I know it's like football season is upon us. Um, oh yeah. So that yeah, brilliant. Phil Stadium Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. Dream big, dream big. Honestly, your dream, like you're good at manifesting. If I have anything to say about that, like you, you manifest a baby because. Well, speaking of manifesting one last thing I, um, I used to have when everything went viral, my ultimate model that I would always, I was like, she's so beautiful. I like, if I could get her to, if I could someday have the money to hire her, I would totally do it. Um, and so I started a little Ashley Graham fund. <laughs> Okay. She was the, what, who popped in my, by the way, in my brain right? when I said that. She yeah. Is, I was like, it's Ashley Graham. I know it. She's I love phenomenal. Her too. 
I mean, she is beautiful. I just love her in every single way. And so she was always the person in my head of like, okay, when I have like Ashley Graham money, I'm going (laughs) to like pay her and I'm going to like see if I can one day hire her. And then one day uh, she posted in her ta-ta towel with her sister who was about to have a baby and she and her sister had purchased a towel and she posted it online and I was like (laughs) yeah so huge shout out to Ashley Graham I am a huge fan and she has no idea like she made my life (laughs) wearing my towel oh my gosh oh my gosh amazing so amazing do you have do you I'm sure you saved that post like you've got like uh, saved it it's printed out a framed in my office are you kidding me like yeah it's amazing yeah. that's big time that's so cool oh my she gosh is big time and yeah. I just she does like body positivity and she's just right. a cool chick let's be real yeah and she's a mom she's like oh like she's been so open about her motherhood journey going when yep. pregnancy postpartum breastfeeding like yeah. everything I yeah she's I have a lot of respect for her too I'm so I I love that she has a tata tata and it was so organic like that's the kind of sometimes that's just like the coolest thing you're like I had no idea you were a fan of my product like right yeah <laughs> right you're like um by the way do you want to just do like an Instagram live with me and then make a commercial out of that any any chance I don't know right any <laughs> chance <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But that was the other thing is at that time when that happened, I was just so thankful that she did it. And I, again, yeah. in my head, I'm like little old me, like, I'll leave her alone. I'm not going to like say anything or, you know, reach out. I'm just, I was just grateful for yeah. her to post. And again, it's another woman supporting another woman owned business and yeah. just mad respect and appreciation for her for doing that she has no idea who I am but she like made my life and I will I will always like talk tagging Ashley Graham tag 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 tag. (laughs) exactly (laughs) oh my gosh she's got it yeah we got it oh I'm I'm gonna definitely be keeping my eye out for that somehow you guys are gonna you're gonna work together again somehow I hope so that would be awesome Yeah. yeah I just know it um yeah do you have, um, you know, as we kind of wrap up, we've been talking about so many amazing things. I've loved this. This is like, I feel like I could just like talk to you all day and, and maybe we will. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, the next time we talk, we're going to be doing it FaceTiming in our ta-ta together. I'm yeah. not going to be the only one wearing mine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am in. I am in. You, yeah. You had me at hello. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I, again, amazing, love, 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 love everything that you're doing. Um, is there anything else exciting that's coming up? What to look out for, um, anything that's evolving that you want to share, you know, just kind of, here's like a time to just, you know, promote, promote what's going on with Tata Tales. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would just like to say, please, everyone, ladies, if you could follow my page or whatever we get a lot of men (laughs) who you know like to follow and I really am trying hard to uh get the community of like just women I mean no offense guys but um just it's different right when you're trying a boob sweat and they're like where the boobs (laughs) or you know it so anyways (laughs) yeah that's the polite way of saying it. Um, So if you could give us a follow and we can stay in touch, that would be awesome. It's Tata Towels on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Um, And then just to also like kick my algorithm into the right fields because again, lots of, lots of men. Yeah. I mean, I hear that. Like it's, it's interesting, like, but, and it's out there and also being on you know, Shark Tank on national television, you got a lot of eyeballs. So yeah, social yeah. media is a, like a totally strange place sometimes. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's great and yes. bizarre. And then as soon as you figure it out, everything changes again. And then yeah. you have to sit there and try and figure out the new algorithms or, you know, yep. so honestly, the past like couple of months, I've tried to just be like, you know what? 
I'm just going to post when I post and I'm not going to get too carried away with like the algorithms and things like that. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of put it out there to everyone of, you know, I would love for this to be a community for women. It's yeah. bigger than boob sweat. It's about so much more. And so, um, yeah, you can follow us to be a part of our, our breast friend club. Yes. And- yeah. And then um, let's see what is coming up. Oh, I'm actually really excited about this because since the LA Women's Expo started this crazy career, I have been so busy and I have not been able to get back into the expos, which yeah. I love doing because there's it's just so fun to be able to have the women feel the towels, try them on and um, all that good stuff. So this year we are jumping back on the bandwagon and we are going to, yes, I'm so excited. I emailed them and I was like, you guys don't even know, like you started up this for me. And I just am so excited to come back. So we are going to be in Arizona, Atlanta, Miami, and Jacksonville, Florida um, for the LA, or I keep calling it the LA Women's Expo, the yeah. Women's expo women's expo um so if you are if you live anywhere near or around that area come check us out and let's have some fun oh I love that and you'll send me all the information and details so I could post like the dates and people can find like you know where you'll be and um it's just always so fun to get to like experience in person I know like I you know I've been doing events and I call them my titty tents yeah, and I love it. It's so fun. Like, and just seeing people's faces when they're with your products and like that, that sparks like a new inspiration, like new, like excitement about what you're doing and seeing, you know, getting to see your products, seeing the Tata towels, like people see them and experience them like that direct feedback. Like it's, it's really powerful. It is. It's great. Yeah. And you know, I've done so well with it being an e-commerce brand, but it's just yeah. so different when you get to be in the crowd with the people and, you know, actually feeling the towels, trying them on. Um, it's, it's different and I love it so much. So I'm excited to, we're going on tour again. Yeah. Titty <laughs> tour, Tata tour. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm here for all that. Well, mm-hmm. This has been, this has been the best, uh, the breast, this has been the breast, the breast conversation, the best day. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm excited for Tata towels. I love being friends with you, like in real life, not just on Instagram. Yes, and, me too. Um, yeah. And I appreciate you taking the time to share your story with all of us. Like, um, it's, yeah, it's so cool. It's like, it, it really plays into something that I've started um, and what's going on with this interview series and just, oh, I love you, dog. Made a little pun. Sorry. Say hi, Lucy. That's my shop dog. Hi, Lucy. Can you say hi? Oh. <laughs> She's always by my side. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I have my little doggy over here too. She's, I can't really tilt my screen to show her, but she, so we, yeah, we have our, we have our fur friends that are got our backs. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I was just I, like, what, what I started here with this interview series is just really getting to talk, uh, talk with people that are, are helping spread a really positive message about our bodies and, and just having those open conversations because the more we talk about our boobs, our experiences with them, just the less shame we feel, the less sexualized they become. And honestly, just more change that can happen in, in this wild world about like women's bodies, women's health, women's anything, put, put any word after there, right? Like, exactly. It's just supporting us, you know, Uh, just like boobs or they're like snowflakes, right? Not one of them is the same. And that's like all of us women, we are all different, but that's the beauty of it is your, uh, your insecurities could be inspiring to somebody else. So, and empowering to change, you know, and I think that's what I would like most out of all of it is women supporting women, period. You know, it doesn't matter what it's about, um, but just being supportive to each other. Perfect. I think that is like the perfect note to end this on. Thank you, Erin, 
Well, thank um, you for having me. I'm excited to do this with you. Yay. All right. Well, so good to see you. Ta-ta for now. Ah, yes. Ta-ta for now. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our Titty Talk today. Stay tuned for our next Titty Talk, where we connect with more real people that are part of the movement, the social movement we started to break the stigma around boobs. Check us out at tittycitydesign.com, where you can find the Let's Talk Titties blog, or follow us on Instagram and TikTok, at Titty City Design.